There's a lot of marketing out there that makes you think that a certain knife is gonna be super important to have or like this one's substantially better than the others and so it's worth paying ridiculous amounts of money for a pocket knife. So today, here's what I've done. I have bought these six pocket knives. These knives range everywhere from about $30 all the way up to $250 depending where you buy it. That is quite the price range for an everyday carry uh, flipper or folding pocket knife. And what we wanna do is go through, each of these is at a very different price point, and I'm gonna do a bunch of testing. I'm gonna test it on numerous things that I've laid out here on the table. And then after I'm done testing it, I also wanna get the impressions of several different people who have varying, um, varying experience with pocket knives. Some who are avid outdoorsmen, uh, who you recognize on this channel, and others who are not avid outdoors people and don't know a whole lot about pocket knives. So here we go. First things first, this is the paper test. I want to test the sharpness of each of these knives right out of the box. And so I'm gonna start with the Kershaw. And the idea with this test is I'm gonna to try to cut really close to where my finger's holding the paper and just see, see how it didn't even catch very well? Once it catches, then I can get it to slice, but you know, it takes a lot of work. Not a very good sharpness right out of the box, Kershaw. This is the Civivi Elementum. This is about a $50 pocket knife. I'm gonna try this one. Better. The next knife is the Sog Spec Arc. This is about a $100 pocket knife. It flips out really well. Some neat things about this knife. Um, it is kind of big. Let's see how this one does. Same thing. It didn't grab the paper at first, but then, ooh, you get a pretty nice smooth cut after that. This is the Benchmade Bug Out. This is made out of S30V steel, the blade is. The handle's aluminum and very light. Um, these are supposed to be extremely sharp. Now, there's something about this one. This one is the only knife in this test that has a serrated blade. I'm gonna try the test without the serrations first. Oh, and see, that just started great. This is the Spyderco uh, Paramilitary 2. Let's see how this one does. This is about a $165 knife. This is also S30V steel, like the Benchmade Bug Out, and that just sliced right through. So the blade quality I'm getting and the sharpness from the factory, I'm definitely seeing it improve as I go along. The last one is the Benchmade Bailout. This is M4 steel. It's the hardest steel of any of these knives here today. Um, it's also, $250 if you buy it straight from Benchmade, um, or about $212 when I bought it on Amazon. Let's see how this does. Okay, so much like the Spyderco, not even, not necessarily better, but much like the Spyderco, it just cut right in very easily. Initial cutting test, you see where we land. For the next test, I wanna cut through a piece of thick Cecil rope. Um, now, the intent here is one, to see how well it cuts, but the other intent behind all of the following tests is to see um, how quickly the knife dulls. So I'm gonna put it through a couple of absurd ones. Um, obviously, when cutting a rope, the best thing to do would be to just cut it like this. That's gonna be the easiest way to cut the rope. But in order to help dull the knife even more, I'm gonna just set it on the table and I'm gonna cut through. Try to kind of saw through it. Fighter Co. Paramilitary 2. Oof, that was slick. Wow, that cut right through. Obviously, all of them were more than capable of cutting a rope. All right, for the next test, I'm gonna slice through a thick onion with each one. Again, it shouldn't damage the blades a whole lot, but so this is testing both sharpness as well as long-term how well the blade holds up. Now I need to be able to get three cuts, so I'm actually gonna do it this way. Here's one. Ooh, that actually cut through very well. Um, pretty nice factory blade here. It's a short knife blade in comparison. So for chopping food, it's maybe not the best choice, but sliced right through. Very good, even as a kitchen knife. All 
uh, that's probably a little bit denser onion because I had the same, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe that S30V steel just doesn't like them. Let's see what the bench made. Yeah, this is a denser onion for sure. So if we go back to the original onion, the first one. No, actually, these harder steels seem to not want to slice through the onion as well. These three knives, the three more expensive knives, all have a coating on the steel blade. And that coating, um, it's cool, right? But it, it also makes the blade a little bit less smooth for cutting. Compared to this Civivi that it's a very like polished steel. And so it's sliced right through like butter. So interesting to note for cutting, um, at least for cutting onions. All right, next, of course you gotta shave a stick, right? You gotta do a little bit of whittling with these knives. So what I'm gonna do is from about the same distance from the bottom with each knife, I'm just gonna shave this stick. All six knives have sliced the stick. For the next test, I have a piece of a cardboard box here that I'm folding so that there's three layers and I'm going to cut across um, the grain of all three layers and just see how well each knife does. bench made bug out really really struggled the uh, bench made bailout actually is the only one that cut all the way through it um, and well into the wood actually um, I noticed that once again these coated blades um, so even though the bench made cut through um, it still kind of dragged a bit more um, these smoother blades do a better job of slicing. Um, I just, that's really interesting. All right, I'm coming down to my last couple of tests here. I'm gonna punch into and then slice down through an aluminum can. Um, the intent here is to somewhat mimic um, packaging um, for your kids' toys and stuff, but this is obviously gonna be more harmful to a knife blade than any plastic packaging. So here we go. It's interesting, um, the M4 steel on the Spyderco paramilitary um, sliced through pretty well, but the M4 steel on the Benchmade bailout hiccuped all along the way down. But they all did a perfectly good job. For our next test, I have a slab of beef. <laughs> I'm going to just cut cross grain, um, cut this beef up each one one time. This one is slicing nicely, but again, the blade's a little short. Um, so like this Avivi, I had to cut through multiple times, but I got a pretty, pretty clean little cut there. Well, they all cut beef just fine. I have uh, some thick steaks out of that roast <laughs> that I can save for later. For the last test, this is the real final sharpness test. I'm going to be cutting through the stem of a tomato and then I will slice the tomato in half. Um, and let's just see how smoothly they slice. This is a good final test because if any of these blades have been at all damaged in the process of all of these tests, including cutting into an aluminum can, they are going to have a hiccup slicing a tomato. Um, so let's see how they do. For this first one, this is the Kershaw. Chop off a tomato there, and then that is smooth. Most of my kitchen knives are not that sharp right now. I'm 
a little surprised. I thought that these tests would uh, damage these a little bit more. Lastly, this Benchmade bailout. Oh man, it's like butter, folks. Like a hot knife through butter. Well, the blade testing portion of this video is over. Obviously, the best test that you can run is to just get one of these knives and use it for weeks, months, years um, for your normal use. But frankly, for an everyday carry knife, for the uses I use a knife for, um, man, every single one of these is gonna last uh, long enough for me to not have to sharpen it, at least on any super regular basis, which means that any one of these is gonna do a perfectly good job for me. Okay, now before you can really make a determination on how much you should be willing to spend on an everyday carry knife, I think it's really important to understand what you would actually use an everyday carry knife for. So I polled um, several people, um, again, from sort of varying levels of just use of a knife. Um, people who use them very frequently, spend a lot of time outdoors, do a lot of hunting and use the same knife for everything um, versus people who would just use it in their day to day. And I've compiled this list that we'll be scrolling through over the next few seconds of things that people have actually used their everyday carry knife for. But I wanna point out that for a lot of us, an everyday carry knife serves just a couple of purposes. And that is opening packages, Yeah, that's mostly it, okay? <laughs> uh, sometimes you'll use your everyday carry knife as something like a screwdriver or something else. I mean, I use mine as just kind of a multi-tool, even if it's just a knife blade. But think about that. If I were using my everyday carry pocket knife as a screwdriver, would I really wanna risk breaking the tip off of my $200 pocket knife? Or would I rather use something that costs me 20 or 30 bucks? All right, so for this segment, I'm gonna invite you, I've, on each of the knives that we have here, I have taped off any branding. Um, so unless you're familiar with the knife itself, you're not gonna know what the brand is. Mm -hmm. um, and what I want you to do is I want you to put them in order here from least expensive to most expensive. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, handle them, open them up, close them, do whatever you wanna do with them, other than, you know, cut me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and put them in order from least to most expensive. And then I'm gonna ask you what, what you think the price should be for each one. Oh, okay. So this will be interesting. Okay, in no particular order. Cool. Overall, I'm saying fifteen dollars, thirty, forty, fifty dollars. 50 to 70 dollars and this one i think is over 100 i think this is a 150 dollar kind of knife all right so your order is actually pretty good at the low end here you got the right knife but it's actually a 32 dollar 99 cent knife not worth it this no. is a gas station knife right the next one's the kershaw cryo it's actually the cheapest and i almost threw 33 dollar in, in knife front of that one the really nice one that you felt was really good it's the cheapest knife it's $33. oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> The next one is the Civivi Elementum. It's a $50 knife. Okay. It kind of looks like a knife my dad would carry. Uh -huh. You know, just a simple, but for an everyday carry Solid knife, knife, like that is a nice knife. It's a $50 <laughs> and 20 cent knife. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, if you're gonna go buy an EDC knife, this might be a good option for you because you're gonna That's save a heck so of a lot funny. of money and you're gonna get a good knife. The next one you put is actually not quite in order. That is the SOG Spec Arc and it's a $95 and 99 cent knife. Okay, this thing is smooth opening yeah. up. So the mechanism is good. Smooth, but that handle is as lame as it could be. I mean, it doesn't even feel like polymer. Yeah. It feels like plastic. And it feels big and kind of bulky and heavy. And mm -hmm. that is a ninety-five dollar knife. These are these are our prices. Um, okay. What we paid for them. Okay. This is the Benchmade bug out. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Forty-four dollars. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's unbelievable, huh? Yeah. Now I get a reveal of this. Too. Yeah, I want to know. So this first one here is actually the Benchmade bug out. Okay. And it's $144.50 yep. gotcha. knife. <laughs> um, but it's extremely light. Yeah. And so it'd be easy to think, feel like that's plastic. Yeah. Um, it's just, I think it's a coated aluminum. 
but I guarantee you could find pretty much the same thing for 50 bucks. It's just nothing special. That's how I feel about Not a bad knife, but nothing special. The next one is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. So other than the SOG and the, uh, the Civivi, you had them in the right order. But it's $165.20. For $165, how about some styling Spyderco? From here <laughs> up, awesome. From here down, lame knife. <laughs> The cheapest one you said is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Okay. And it costs $165. <laughs> All right. And the last one is the Benchmade, so same brand as the Bug Out, the Benchmade Bailout. It's a $212. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And this is the price I paid for it. If you try to buy it from Benchmade, it's a $250 knife. You can tell, you can tell. that it's a really nice That's knife. That's a fancy knife. Very high grade steel, very hard. $212.50. Oh, I undershot that cents. one. It's the bailout and it's the most expensive knife. Wow. <laughs> $212. Without knowing what they charge for it, would you have ever guessed that that's a $200? Uh, no, knife? I didn't. I would I mean, I could tell that this was something special, but 150 <laughs> was kind of my max guess. Well, there you have it, folks. A layperson's opinion on pocket knives. Who was very wrong <laughs> on it. <laughs> I just feel bad. I'm like, I feel like apologizing to this knife. Like, sorry, I thought you were $30. No, no, you're actually $165. Okay, I misjudged. <laughs> that was really fun. I was a little bit surprised by some of the guesses, especially from people who have been around a lot of knives. But I think that just kind of goes to show sort of the preferences that people have. Frankly, if you didn't know that this costs $150, would you ever guess that? These guys wouldn't, I wouldn't have. Would I ever spend $150 for a knife that I'm just gonna use for anything and everything? I don't know that I would. Even though they might feel the same, I find that those really inexpensive gas station pocket knives often can't hold a blade for very long. Every single one of the knives on this table has withstood our tests. Frankly, they were short, um, but they were, I put them through a fair amount. And the fact that all of them could very cleanly slice a tomato after all of that just goes to show that you probably don't need to be spending $250 on a pocket knife. None of these guys could tell. Some of them might think that this was the $200 pocket knife. So just get what you like and what's going to work for your needs.